Working with Reflections and Nodes, Part 2. We'll pick up where we left off, looking at the Noise Node. The most obvious and notable parameter of the Noise Node is the Noise Type parameter. If we click on this pull-down menu, we can see the numerous types of noise available. Here we'll look at the individual types. The Random Noise Type creates noise that resembles tiles. When used as a bump map, it creates an interesting offset tile grid. Random Filtered Random filtered noise includes filtering. The resulting noise has smoother transitions from one region to the next. Perlin. The default and most commonly used noise type, it resembles the white noise on an old style television. You'll notice that it's in color, but by choosing from the output pull down menu, we can choose grayscale. We'll switch it back. Simplex. Similar to Perlin, but has interference fields between regions of noise. Musgrave. Organic, curvy, dissimilar shaped fields of color. We'll settle on Musgrave for our needs here. Now to configure our noise. Let's change our amplitude parameter to 7.4. We'll also change the scale parameter to 2.5. Just to mention, we can also adjust the scale in independent 3D directions via these independent scale text input fields. Once we have configured our noise node, let's drag from the out terminal port of the noise node to the bump source input terminal port of the material node. You'll notice that our noise changed to grayscale, which is how it is interpreted as a bump source. Now that we have set things up in the object graph, let's click on the open render window icon at the top of the screen. We'll click on the render image icon and we can see our results. At this point, we have a great looking reflection, but there is still room for improvement. You'll notice in the photo that natural reflections have a desaturated tan tinge. We can mimic this nuance using the specular color parameter of our material. We could also handle this via nodes. So let's go back to the available nodes tab and once again under the material generator types let's choose constant. We'll drag the constant node to the object graph and if we click on the constant node we can see its parameters at the right hand side of the screen. The constant node creates a particular value or color. In this case, we'll click on the color swatch, which will open the select color dialog. Here we'll pick a light tan color, in order to use as our specular color. Click OK to close the select color dialog. And now, we'll take and drag from the out terminal port of the constant node to the specular color input port of the material node. Now that we have configured our specular color, let's once again click on the open render window icon at the top of the screen. We'll click on the render image icon and we can see our results. With this revision, you can see how we use the constant node to apply advanced compositing color control to our reflections. Note the difference between the two. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about working with reflections and nodes.